Yo, yo, what's going on, you guys? Your boy Devon Terrell, the living weirdo. And today, in this Help Me Devon tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to get the perfect reverbs. Now, obviously, when I say perfect reverbs, I'm saying this loosely because I'm going to give you a technique that gives you a ballpark figure of where you should be. I'm gonna give you something that makes your reverbs breathe, react in time, and dissipate in the right and correct spaces. Let's get right to it. Okay, so the song I'm gonna be using as an example today is a song you've heard before, I've used it in tutorials, it's called She A Dub, it's one of my own songs. And basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let you hear uh, the vocal solo with reverb on it by itself, uh, drowning in reverb with the reverb times just literally just slapped on a reverb and have no idea what the times or any of the settings are just hear it for what it is listen closely don't worry about it she a dub yeah you the only one to show love yeah all my ex is looking like ghosts yeah only see them when i make a post okay you can still hear the reverb literally dissipating right now now that's too much reverb. What a lot of people don't realize is that that reverb, when you have pads, when you have synths that have slight reverbs and things like that on them, you're gonna be muddying up your mix so much because you're creating such a space that is loose and flowy that you can't even tell what's going on. There's no difference. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm going to give you, or better yet, I'm going to play you the same vocal with the reverb in time of the song. Listen closely. Don't worry about it, she a dub. Yeah, you the only one to show love. Yeah, all my ex is looking like ghosts. Yeah, only see him when I make a post. Way big of a difference. The vocal seems clear. It has the space in all of those types of things. But at the same time, the reverb seems to be cutting out at the right time in the song. Thus, we get this. Don't worry about it, she a dub. Yeah, you the only one to show love. Yeah, all my ex is looking like ghosts. And you can hear that it's it's the reverbs are literally in time. It's literally dissipating on the beats. It's it is one of the most underrated techniques that a lot of people do not realize or do in their mixes. How did we do this? Well, it's an easy thing and it's a hard thing at the same time for some people. There is math involved. And the reason why I kind of feel like I want to say it's easy is because if there was a math equation to figure out mixing, then I would do it. That'd be incredible. Well, for your reverb times, there is a math equation that you can do for all your songs that can help you. So, without getting into this very deep, deep dive about with, with the equation in math, what you're going to do is you're going to take the number 60,000. I'm going to say it again. You're going to take the number 60,000. This is the number that you're always going to use. This number is used to convert your BPM to milliseconds. You need to convert it to milliseconds. And the reason why is because most of these reverb times and pre-delay times, which are the two main uh, settings that you're going to be messing with on your reverbs, these are what the increment, this is the increment of uh, the unit of measure that it uses. It uses a millisecond. So that's why you're doing this. So basically what you're going to do is you're going to take 60,000 and divide it by the BPM of the song. And that equals a quarter note, the quarter note of the song. So that's going to give you the quarter note in time of the song. If you're confused, let me put it to you like this. You have a delay, correct? So let's get that. So 60,000 the BPM of this song is 164. So 60,000 divided by 164 equals 365.8. Now, math geniuses, you know you round up, 366. So basically it's saying that 366 milliseconds is the quarter note of this song. We just figured out the quarter note of the song. Stay with me, okay? Now, if we go on over to this delay, right? You see that this, this delay is a quarter note delay. Now, you see this piece right here that says MS. Now, it says the BPM right here. Granted, a lot of us don't have to figure out the BPM, is, uh, excuse me, don't have to figure out the milliseconds of the song. Granted, because um, most delays, and we live in a digital era, most of this stuff is just synced and mapped to our entire session. He, check this out. So you see the one fourth uh, BPM right here. Now, you see over here on the right-hand side, it says MS. That's milliseconds. If I click this, it's telling me that the BPM or milliseconds of this is 
366. It's literally that. So it's literally doing that math that we just did ourselves. 60,000 divided by 164 gave us 366. And that's what this H delay, for instance, is telling us that the quarter note of this song is 366. Stay with me. This gets way easier. So now that you understand that concept, you're taking 60,000 and you're dividing that by the BPM. Now, how are you going to apply this to your reverb times? Well, it's fairly simple. When you look at the reverbs that you have, most of these reverbs are going to say reverb time or decay, etc. What you're going to do is, for instance, 366 is telling you that that's the quarter note timing for this song. So obviously you will come right over to your reverb time right here, one sec, and you type in 366, 366 which would be extremely high of a reverb, right? So 3.6, excuse me, sorry, sorry guys, 3.66. Okay, so that's what it's basically saying our reverb time should be, right? All right, so let me play that vocal for you by itself so you can get an idea of what it sounds with the quarter note. Pardon me for one sec, got it. So listen to this right quick. Don't worry about it, she a dog. Yeah, you the only one to show love. Yeah, all my okay, so granted, still dissipating. Still too much of a reverb. And I know you're saying, like, why? What is the problem? Well, a quarter note delay, or excuse me, a quarter note reverb time may be too big for the song that you're looking for. You're looking for something shorter, especially with this vocal that pretty much just goes every second beat of the song. So what you do is, why don't we use the eighth note? You understand what I'm saying? So how do you find the eighth note uh, reverb time of this? So the way we do it is simple. Divide 366 or 365.8 blah, blah, blah by two. This gives us the eighth note delay or the eighth note, the eighth note uh, timing. And if I divide 182 by two, that'll give us the 16th and et cetera. And that's how it goes. So I'm going to take this 182.92 or better yet, 183, because I'm going to round up math leets, because we're math geniuses out here. And I'm going to put that in. So 183. So that's there. Okay, so now we got our reverb in a great time. Let me play this for you, and let's see if this eighth note works. Don't worry about it, she a dub. Yeah, you the only one to show love. Yeah, all my ex is looking like ghosts. Yeah, only and I like that. I like the sound of it. It's literally going in and dissipating like literally right before the next line comes in. And that's what you want. That's how you get your reverbs to be in time and you get more movement from the song. Last thing I'm going to show you is the pre-delay. And a lot of people probably don't even know that this button exists on their reverbs. But the pre-delay is extremely important. I'll tell you why. What the pre-delay's job is, the shorter the pre-delay, Basically, that's the sooner that the reverb is going to engage on the vocal, on the transient of the vocal. So it's like you'll get more of a drowning sound in the reverb. But if you take that, that pre-delay and slow it down, you'll get a vocal that cuts through first, then the reverb will attach on top of that. So basically, you're just telling the reverb, listen, I don't want you to affect the initial transient or initial cadence of the vocal until this time signature. And that's super important and this is what it how this is how you do it so basically i like to get my pre delay somewhere underneath the 100 millisecond mark how do i do that guess what i'm going to divide the quarter note or the eighth note or the 16th note by 2 so i have the 182 let's say for instance which was my reverb time was 183 milliseconds what i want to do is i want to divide that by 2 now that's going to give me the 16th note and the 16th note for us is 91. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to type 91 in. And that's that. So now I'm saying, listen, do not put this reverb on my vocal for 91 milliseconds. I'm going to play it for you and let you hear it now. Listen closely. And I'll A, B it so you can just hear the difference. I'm going to turn it all the way down, let it attack the vocal immediately, and then I'm going to show you the 91. Let's just copy this. Listen closely. Don't worry about it, she a dub. Yeah, you the only one to show love. Yeah, all my ex is looking like ghosts. 
Yeah, only see him when I make a post. So what I notice is one thing that's very slight. I notice that there's more presence on the vocal when I have the pre-delay slow down to 91 sec milliseconds, which is its 16th note. So I notice that I always want to make sure that my vocal cuts through before I have the reverb really attack it, and that'll give you the best sounding reverb. So guys, I know that was a lot of math. I know that was a very, very uh, circumulous type of tutorial, but nonetheless, this is a video, and this is something that you can go back and you can watch over and over again, pause, and try to really, really understand what's going on. You can literally be mixing your song right next to me while this video is playing. Don't stress yourselves out. This is just a technique that I use. I think it's incredible. Once you get yourself in the workflow of doing this, you will be unstoppable, your reverbs and everything will sound great. Now granted, you can have reverb times that are super high in time, like 366, which we had, but it just depends on the style of your song, the type of music you're doing. If you want your reverbs to sound like these big drowning vocals, sure, go for the quarter note because it comes in and it leaves. But when you have a vocal that's constantly riding and going, you kind of want to make those reverb times a little bit shorter because you don't want that to muddy your mix and keep climbing on top of each other. So. I hope you guys excuse me. So I hope you guys enjoyed this Help Me Devon tutorial. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, follow us at Help Me Devon on the Instagram, and talk to me in the comments. Let me know what you think. I love talking to you guys and just getting an idea of what you want to see next. And I'll see you next time.